one thing I noticed when I moved here is that Seattle is completely different from Chicago. And <laughs> so, and it's more diverse. In Seattle, we have like so much diversity, people of all different backgrounds, um, where food is really important to all these different cultures. I have 26 countries represented in my school at Denny International. Chief Self also. Not all these kids are gonna go for hamburgers, fries, and pizzas. They want other things. I immediately started to reach out to different community groups, student organizations, parent groups, just so I could get a better understanding of the, the city, like the type of spices, type of dishes, you know, what type of food do, you know, your kids eat when they're home, you know, what would they like to see in the lunchroom. From there, I just started game plan on how can we start incorporating the different type of cultures in the food. So a kid, um, no matter what their background is, when they come into that cafeteria, they feel like they're at home. When I came in, we actually cooked. We cooked everything by scratch. And then we changed over to where more things started to come to us. We just would heat it up. One of the very first things I did was improve quality, you know, try to get away from processed foods, bring in more fresh fruits, more fresh vegetables. But then I brought in the district chef. So I really um, was very on board with the mission of um, presenting more culturally relevant food. And I feel like that's how people learn different cultures through food the best, especially young children. I am an immigrant, I came from Brazil. And so I started here at first grade and I just remember the corn dogs. I'm like, what is this thing on a stick? Um, nachos and just the cheese sauce. It just didn't feel to me like a meal, like a, a, a comforting meal that I was used to, like a home cooked meal. I think that whenever we do do items that are made from scratch, um, we really see like the benefits of that. Our kitchen is pretty big, it has a lot of like industrial equipment, so it's here, so let's, let's put it to use. Like we did a, a Somali chicken stew. Um, we served salmon chowder, and that was like smoked salmon from Lumi Island. Delicious, that was a big hit. The salmon chowder, the wonton soup, I really want to do more of those because I think the kids will really go for that. We work with students. Um, we had a student from Haiti. Hi, I'm Emmy Collins, district chef at Seattle Public School, and I'm here with Angel Doss, Seattle Skill Center culinary student at Rainier Beach, and she's going to be teaching us how to make her family's recipe for Haitian chicken stew which I'm then going to take and we're going to be serving it up to the students at all the Seattle schools. I think a lot of people underestimate kids and their palates. <laughs> and at first, like, some people were like, what kid is going to eat lentil stew? <laughs> you know, and it was like, let's try it out. I I'm always like, let's try it out, see how it does. And we did it and it was like probably the most popular thing that we put on the menu last year was a lentil stew. That's really good. Thank you. It was March 12th, my 60th birthday, and I was done with work. I, we, what we thought was three weeks. We came back on that, I believe it was the 16th, that Monday, and we were open for business because we had to make sure the kids got fed. When, when the pandemic started, you know, we knew that families who was already in need, you know, they're going to need even more support and then we're gonna get a bubble of families who haven't struggled before that's going to start struggling. So how can we maintain what we already started and create a, a, a welcoming environment so people don't feel embarrassed or ashamed to come and pick up a meal? When this first started, we weren't doing hot food because it's like, how do you serve hot food? Everybody, like I feel like all the school districts around the nation was, you know, doing prepackaged stuff, doing box, like just boxing things up for people to take for the week. And that's kind of like what we started as well, just like sandwiches and cold meals and stuff. So right now we have 40 meal sites. Um, we have direct home delivery. These two schools are one of the largest food distribution sites in Washington state. So Amazon is, is delivering to over 3,000 families daily. They make the boxes really fun. There's, there's good meals in there, there's fun things. They got cereal, they got milk, they got fresh fruit, vegetables. We, we, I think we started out with about 375. Now we're up to 615 to 637. We average around 30,000 meals a day. We're also delivering to um, housing units and shelters directly from our central kitchen. Fair Star donated meals 
uh, extra supper meals. City of Seattle have set up meal sites at different housing units so we can distribute meals to them. No matter where you live, there should be a meal in close proximity for you to be able to pick up. I've seen many times like families coming in, parents coming in like in tears, like just very thankful that we're able to provide food for their family because they either lost their jobs, they're desperate, they don't know what to do. At least they can come to one of these 40 sites and make sure that their children are fed. Thank you, have a great day. We've done a really good job during the school year on making sure we represent different cultures through our food. And, you know, we took a step back for a couple weeks and then came up with a game plan on how we can continue to do that. Like, let's get back to like our goals and what we wanted to do. And we still can do it even through this situation that we're in. And we've proven that we were able to do that, you know, serving. Yeah, we have like sandwiches and salads as options, but we're also still cooking from scratch, making culturally relevant food. I try every month. Um, we've done like a special, um, we did gumbo last month. We're about to do, one of our supervisors is of Eritrean background and there's a lot of like Ethiopian Eritrean families in our community. So I'm working with her and members of the community to make their typical food in Jeddah with like a stew, like a lentil stew that they do. So I think that they're gonna make good food that the kids can come in and grab and, and they're, gonna, they're actually gonna be eating it instead of just taking the fries out and throwing the rest in the garbage. We're just gonna continue to grow and, and continue to be creative. I can't wait to get back in service so they can really show us what they're gonna do. That's what's gonna be good.